a Republican lawmaker in Tennessee suggests execution by hanging on a tree. Yahoo, just who do you think he was referring to? Stay tuned and let's get into this story. DeSantis works to legally censor teachings about historic and systemic racism in his state. An incident in Tennessee this week is showing us what can happen when people disregard that history. On Tuesday, a bill in the state legislature that would allow inmates to be executed by firing squad was brought up for debate before the Tennessee House's Criminal Justice Committee. One Republican lawmaker, State Representative Paul Shirell, expressed support for the bill but felt it didn't go far enough. I was just wondering about, uh, could I put an amendment on that? It would include hanging by a tree. An amendment to allow lynchings as a method of state-sponsored execution. Representative Sherrell either somehow didn't know this history or chose to recall it on purpose. But lynch mobs in Confederate states killed more than 2,800 people, about one person a week, between 1882 and 1930. 214 people were lynched in the state of Tennessee alone during this period. State Representative Shirell has since apologized and says he regrets using, quote, very poor judgment. But his Democratic colleague, State Representative G.A. Hardaway, had this to say. When I heard the statement, I was sad and I was mad at the same time. I couldn't believe that I was hearing that. And of all committees, a justice committee, the irony, a justice committee, and I don't need to hear anybody talk about it wasn't me, that I wasn't alive back then. I wasn't alive back then either, but I can assure you that multi-generational trauma still exists, not in only myself, but in all black folks who are in America today. Back with us is Jelani Cobb. Um, this just to me seems like such an expression of, of, of why we need to talk about systemic racism and historic racism, and also is a full expression of what the right wants to be able to say uncensored, unfettered. Why do I have to worry about what the snowflake liberals mm -hmm. think of me? I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out there with my vigilante justice ideas. History be damned. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the worst uh, enactment of the, the idea that those who fail to learn from history are doomed to repeat it. Um, you know, as I point out, if you want a really kind of depressing interpretation of that, is that sometimes we repeat history precisely because people have learned from it. Yes. Meaning that there are people who observe the worst of the past and want to actually drag that into the present. Um, but when you look at the history of that state, you know, the indefensible, the Memphis riot of 1866, where black women were raped in mass and black men were murdered in the aftermath of the Civil War. The uh, anti-lynching crusade that Ida B. Wells, the, the uh, early uh, journalist who fought against lynching, uh, began uh, when three of her friends were lynched uh, in the state of Tennessee. We could walk through the whole history, the whole blood-soaked history of what happened in that state and other Confederate states and other states that were outside of the Confederacy, for that matter. Uh, and so, yeah, it, it is a, a, a derogatory insult uh, to the people who actually know what happened in that history and who are the ancestors, rather the descendants of the people who, who suffered in that way. Yeah, and I think the Representative Hardaway brings up this really important point. It's not just that no one should be ignorant, but saying things like that, it continues a cycle of multi-generational right. trauma. Like, just the utterance of that alone mm -hmm. is wrong. And I think people don't, there is, there is no conception of the human cost of, of even proposing an idea like that on the Justice Committee. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where the impunity has to, and that's precisely why we're trying, that's why you have diversity and inclusion training, right? Mm -hmm. That's why you teach people history. That's why we talk about racism, is so that people understand how totally unacceptable it is to even, I mean, to think, it, it just the idea of suggesting lynching as a method of execution seems unfathomable in the year 2023, but here's where we are. That's where we are. Just to think that this is 2023 
and others feel that they can still stand up and be very vocal about how they feel about brown and black skinned people everywhere. And we just continue to think that this means absolutely nothing and that we can continue to stay in these lands of oppression when we know that clearly we don't belong there. And any chance and opportunity that the others get to stand up and, and be very vocal about how they feel about us, they do it openly and they don't care. I mean, hanging on a tree, like really? Nobody cannot tell me that this man, okay, I'm sure with some intelligence was not aware of African-American history. He intentionally sat in the presence of Congress and suggested that he be in favor of execution by hanging on a tree. You know, I'm just not amazed by these stories anymore. And I always say at this point, y'all should not be either because it is something that is continuing to happen over and over and over and over again. And the only way it's going to change is if we take the power into our own hands and change the situation. How do we change the situation? Not by protesting in their streets, burning down their buildings and demanding for change. No, it's by getting up out of these countries where we do not belong and going about our very own business, taking our resources and our wealth right along with us. I mean, at this point, it's ridiculous. And we have to do something different. We have to change, not only for ourselves, but you have to consider your future generations to come. And especially if you have kids, consider what about your kids? They have to continue to grow up in vol volatile situations, such as these various situations that's occurring for brown and black skinned people globally. It's happening too often, over and over, repeatedly to us. And unnecessarily, because we don't have to deal with that. We do not have to deal with this foolishness, but we choose to just sit back, stay in these countries, prop our feet up, and demand freedom and justice while we're slaving away at their various employment positions, further helping to build up their country and their economy. I'm telling you, if brown and black skin people globally decide to pull out of these countries and bring their resources back to the continent, you are going to see just how quick these European countries are going to fall. They heavily depend on us for a source of labor, support economically, because you know, we spend the coins. We always in the stores buying Jordans and Louis V and all of these things that we cannot afford all at our expense while they benefit. So it has to be a change in our frequency, our way of thinking, our perception of reality, because we have got it misconstrued. And blatant disrespect is going to only persist until we have that desire to change and come together and merge as one and really work to build up our own. Why be in somebody else's house building it up when you can be in your very own? It just don't make no sense to me. I can never understand the logic and the reason of that. So get your resources, get your wealth, get up, get up out, of, out of them countries and return back to where you belong. In the end, drop a comment and let me know what you think about this story. Until next video, I'm Melody and I will see you soon.